Hi, my name is George, and I work for the Doherty Arts Center. And you might know me from such programs as Creativity Club. Now, you guys who go to the Doherty Arts Center and go to Creativity Club during the school year might be thinking, nah, I don't know this guy, George. But it's because during the school year, I'm stationed at Oak Hill Elementary. That's right, go Oak Hill Eagles. Since I just got home from being at the Doherty Art Center to go pick up some art supplies to make some art for this video, I gotta go wash my hands. See you in 20 seconds. My hands are all clean. Now I can pet my cat, Derpy Joe. Derpy Joe's a good kitty. For this video, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite artists ever, and that is Juan Miro. Miro was a famous Spanish Catalan artist he did works in uh, painting and sculpture, as well as uh, ceramics. And he was born in Barcelona, Spain in 1893. Miro died in 1983. And whenever I feature some sort of artists in my creativity uh, club class, my kids always ask, they always ask, how did he die? How did that artist die? So I'm gonna tell you, Miro died of cardiovascular disease. So I gotta tell you, take care of your heart. Take care of your heart. So Miro's painting was influenced by the works of such artists as Paul Clay and Vasily Kandinsky. You should look those up. Go online, look them up. They're great painters, wonderful. But he was also influenced by the writings of psychologist Sigmund Freud, which is very cool. Though he never formally joined this group, Miro was tightly associated with the Surrealists, like Dali and Magritte. You should also look up Salvador Dali and René Magritte. Look those up on the internet. Those are super cool painters. Uh, so, in 1939, a month before World War II started, Miro and his family, who were living in Paris at this time, they escaped to the French countryside in uh, Bordeaux, I believe it was, and they then escaped to Mallorca, Spain. Mallorca, Spain is this cool Spanish island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Fun fact, it happens, uh, Mallorca, Spain happens to be where the awesome tennis player Rafael Nadal is from. Cool, right? So it was during this tumultuous, fearful time of World War II that Miro created a series of 23 paintings on paper called Constellations. I just so happen to have a framed poster of one called La Chante du Rassignal et Minuet et la Pleure Matinale. I totally mangled the French. I don't know French, but I'll tell you the translation. It is the Nightingale Song at Midnight and the Morning Rain. We're going to be inspired by this Miro painting and notice his limited palette and utilize some of his visual language, which I'll explain what that all means as we go along. So now we're gonna go head out to my studio and start drawing and then eventually paint like Miro. I wanna talk about the idea of a motif. A motif is a dominant idea or a distinctive feature in a piece of art. And I'll show you what that is when I show you uh, this Miro piece that's in my studio. So this is the Miro piece that we're going to be inspired by. And you'll first notice the limited palette and the utilization of some of his visual language. And that uh, some of the motifs that he's using, uh, such as the crescent or moon shape we see. And we will also see uh, stars such as a five-pointed star, and we also see a four-pointed or isotoxal star. We will also see spirals and squiggles. We see many asterisks and even some triangles, and we see some humanoid uh, shapes in there as well. Uh, but the main she uh, shape we see repeated 
is the circle. There are circles everywhere and they are usually rendered in two colors. Now, speaking of colors, how many colors how, uh, has Miro used in this painting? Well, we have a sort of a gray background, but the two main colors are red and black, and then there's a bit of white and blue. So to create this Miro-like piece, the materials I'm using today are pretty simple. I have a piece of brownish gray paper called bogus paper. It's a mix of recycled craft paper and newsprint. It's best for drawing with charcoal and pencil, but it'll be fine for a bit of wet paint. My sheet of paper is 12 by 18, and I'm using it horizontally. It is not the same proportions as the actual Miro painting, but I'm not reproducing the painting today. I'm just being inspired by his visual language. The next thing I'll need is a drawing pencil. Since I will sketch first, I have an eraser. I have a fine point Sharpie marker for all of the line work. Sharpies are easy for line work and fun to use. I have some brushes, a medium number 10 size, a smaller number 4 size, and then a fine, fine brush for uh, the smaller circles that are on the painting. For paint, I'm using liquid tempera paint. It's washable and it's pretty opaque, opaque, meaning that you cannot see through it when you apply it to the paper. I only need to use red, white, and blue. You will need a cup of water and a rag or paper towel to clean your brushes. Let's do this thing. And this is the final piece, inspired by Juan Miro's Constellations. This has been George for the Darty Art Center, and you can find more on Instagram and the old Facebook. Thanks for watching.